Hey guys, Nate Harris here with Stone River Outfitters. Thanks for joining me. In this video, I'm going to share with you how to tie another New Hampshire original and longtime shop favorite, the Truly Deadly. An exceptionally reliable producer that's proven particularly effective on the dead drift when prospecting deeper pools and swifter runs in search of both big trout and landlocked salmon alike. Let's go ahead and get started. We'll begin with an appropriately sized gold tungsten bead and a high quality short pair of shank scud or caddis pupil hook like today's TMCO 2457 size 14. And the thread we'll use is Danville's 6 out Flymaster, color black. We'll start the Truly Deadly, like we do all of our flies, with a standard jam knot placed just behind the tungsten bead. And of course, once snug, we'll go ahead and rid ourselves of the excess with a quick careful tug. Next, we'll grab in hand our trusty spool of UTC Ultra Wire, size small, color of course red. And after snipping a comfortably long 5 to 6 inch working length, we'll go ahead and secure the wire firmly in place, comfortably behind our bead, using a few tight turns. Of course, once snug, we'll then begin binding our wire smoothly rearward along the underside of the hook shank, using well controlled, tightly placed thread wraps, continuing in progressive fashion until we've reached a comfortable stop located deep into the hook's curved bend. Next, to create the truly deadly's tail, We'll select in hand a nice, wide, webby, yellow dyed schlappen feather, and we'll strip from its base a nice, sparse, even tipped bunch of soft, fine yellow fibers. We'll then briefly pre measure the bunch so that the fibers extend a short, proportional distance beyond our hook bend. And once satisfied, we'll go ahead and tie our tail squarely in place at the hook's rear using a few well placed, tight turns of thread. Naturally, once snug, we'll then advance our bobbin smoothly forward towards the hook eye using nice, evenly spaced turns, binding down our schlappen along the hook shank's top as we go, continuing in progressive fashion until we begin reach that comfortable stop located about two bead lengths behind our hook eye. Once there, we'll simply lift then trim the excess schlappen away neatly at its base with a quick snip from our scissors. Next. We'll begin winding forward in smooth, continuous, hand over hand fashion our small red ultra wire. Working slowly, smoothly, and progressively up the hook shank using tightly drawn, carefully controlled, close and abutting turns, we'll create as we go a nice, level, handsome red wire abdomen. Of course, once we've again reached that comfortable stop located about two bead lengths behind our hook eye. We'll then tie our wire off tightly against the hook shank using a few snug drawn thread wraps. And of course, once firmly secured, we'll go ahead and rid ourselves of the excess wire with a quick couple of twists. Next, to create our thorax, we'll grab in hand a semi coarse fiber dubbing, dyed olive, and after rolling a small sparse pinch onto our thread, we'll go ahead and wrap ourselves a nicely shouldered dubbing ball. Ensuring as we wind that we do not build too thickly forward, as doing so will push our bead uncomfortably tight against the hook eye, making hackling virtually impossible. Once happy with our thorax, we'll take a brief moment to install a quick whip finish just behind our bead, and of course, once secured, we'll neatly trim away our thread closely at its base with a quick, careful snip from our scissors. Next. After pushing our bead backwards against the dubbing to create some space, we'll reinstall our thread just behind the hook eye using a quick, well-placed jam knot, and of course we'll rid ourselves of the excess again with a quick tug. Then, to create the truly deadly signature soft-tackled collar, we'll pluck a single, well-marked, appropriately sized, natural Hungarian partridge feather, and we'll prepare it like we do most by quickly trimming back the feather's tip and stripping from its base any excess fluff. Then with the tip facing front and the feathers curved side facing down, we'll go ahead and tie our partridge feather firmly to the hook shank just forward of the bead using a few nice tight well placed turns of thread. And of course to keep our feather from pulling free while folding or wrapping, we'll take a moment to bend the trim tip backwards along the hook shank before installing a final few more snug locking wraps. Once secured, we'll next pre-fold our hackle by gently sweeping and pitching the feather barbules rearward from the stem. And once adequately folded, we'll go ahead and begin winding forward our collar by taking two, or perhaps three, sparse, carefully controlled turns with our hackle. Once 
once satisfied, we'll snugly tie off our partridge feather with a few well-placed, tightly drawn thread wraps. And of course, once firmly secured, we'll go ahead and trim away the excess stem closely at its base with a close, careful snip from our scissors. A brief firm pinch, and a gentle push of the bead perhaps to help tame our collar. Then we'll go ahead and build ourselves a nice, neat, level sloping thread head. A last minute snip, or a quick careful pluck with the feathers exposed excess tip if necessary. And we'll then finish our fly using a traditional whip knot. A brief snug pull, perhaps to ensure our whip knot holds. And once taut, we'll go ahead and trim our thread free with a close careful snip from the scissors. One last gentle sweep and a final firm pinch or two to help redress and align our hackled collar. And of course, once satisfied, we'll end this fly like we do most with a nice level application of clear, glossy head cement drug evenly around our thread wraps. Well friends, there we have it, the truly deadly tight start to finish. This simple, heavily weighted, fast sinking, soft tackled nymph has long earned a solid reputation as a first class searching pattern throughout New Hampshire and beyond. A wide proven favorite, perfect by its design, for plying both bottom hugging trout and landlocked salmon, not only from those deeper, slower moving pools, but for plucking them from the roily current seams with swifter flowing, shallower runs as well. If you've not yet given tying or fishing the truly deadly a try, well, you're truly missing out. Hey gang, thanks again for tuning in today. Please remember to visit us on the web for all your fly fishing and fly tying needs. And as always, snug wraps and tight lines to all.